my building and chaperone. And as you can tell, I'm getting close to the finish line. I'm excited because I think one or two more episodes and I'll have this beautiful ship finished. Let me give you a quick flyover for those of you that just want to see what it looks like. And then I'll go into more detail about how I got here. Most of the work that I completed is here at the rear of the ship. But there's little details all along the way. This is a point that's easy to miss. This, what is called a fender, attaches, and look, it goes on the outside of the hull, just down a little bit, but it's wider, so there's a little notch, and if you look real close, it's notched out right there. So that's how this 1 8 inch piece will fit there. You need to notch out where it uh, comes in contact and overlaps where the hull is. I made these two pieces that will fit on each side just like that. I stained them. If you look close on the picture on the front of the manual, you can tell they're kind of a wood tone to them. And I'm just going to CA glue these right on the same plane. I'm going to super glue them right onto where that post is. Hold this in place for a few seconds. Recently I switched. I used to use the medium uh, CA glue and I found this thick Bond Extra on Amazon and it says thick. It's not really that thick but it bonds much quicker for me and easier to uh, get things to attach. In addition to this front rub strip there's another one back here three posts from the rear of the ship. In hindsight, these black half circles that go around the paddles, I painted them on the uh, placard. I wish I hadn't, I think, because the paint kind of sticks all the way around and I have to free it up with the, the razor blade knife. Whereas if I had cut them out first, then I wouldn't have as much difficulty getting them out. For me to get these, half circles on properly. I take and just put glue on the very two tips. And then there is a line on one side of the wheel. If I get it in position, about like that. And I only put glue here and here, and then I can maneuver it a little bit. And for this, I've been using wood glue, so it gives me a little more time to maneuver. Now, off screen, I'm tapping it in the wood glue. You can see the two little dots. And now I can slowly kind of move it in to position. And it goes halfway, and then I kind of hold this side down, and then I can bring this side around. Get a second half. Again, tapping the the glue off screen. I have a little puddle of it over to my left. And now I can kind of do the same thing here. That gets it just where I want it. There will be one of these circular things on both sides of the wheel. This back side is not marked, but if you put this one on first, that'll give you kind of a guide for the next one. To help with spacing of the paddle wheel frames. I took the measurement that was recommended and it's pretty much right on. And I made these little spacers right there, one on each side. In the center, I took a straw and I slit it and then cut a little bit of the slit out and then I could slip it over the axle. Now that I think about it, I could have done the straws on the outside too. It's probably a good idea. I had just mentioned how the straw, I like that idea better than the wooden spacers. So I filmed that a couple days ago and I've been working on this some more and I've gone with the straws and here's the straw. 
I just slid it, measured it to the, the distance that it should be. Now it's a matter of taking a pair of tweezers, forcing that straw to stay open, placing it over the axle. Once in place, it'll just wrap right around there. Now this is the third one, so it has a little more pressure on it, but there they are lined up. Now, this is not set in place yet. It's just kind of sitting here. The other thing I'll mention is these rods that bring the, the power that move back and forth. There's a little opening inside the ship that you need to find it so it'll slide further forward. So there's, it's towards the outside on each one. And once that is found, then this will go in further or out further and you can adjust, you know, the distance from the back of the ship that the that the wheels go. Now that I have those straw spacers in there, I can push them a little bit together and now I can move all of these so I can put the paddles and get them all lined up. There's some framing members that go up here. This will determine where that block goes that holds the axle for the paddle wheel itself. So it gets about centered. This is one of those things I wish I had done earlier before I put a lot of this together. There's a block here that holds the axle for the water wheel. And I had pre-drilled a starter hole on each side. Now the instructions actually showed like multiple holes. They would be so tiny and they said just trim down a, a dowel, it'd be like splinters. So I'm just putting two nails, one on each side. But because I put everything together, I'm really struggling getting them in. So I've got this little device here that can set on a nail. I got it started. And now it's just a matter of tapping it in. Two reasons for this. It'll give it a little bit more stability. I, I have that glued in place but also for appearance so that it looks like something's actually holding that in place. Now I've taken a piece of scrap wood and just on the two outside wheels attached it with glue temporarily and now I can bring these inside wheels up to the same level and I can begin to put paddles on. So I'll put paddles on the next one up. And I'll leave these on till last. That'll give everything lined up just right, is what I'm hoping. So let me get some of the paddles. They're already painted and ready to go. I have my first row of paddles in place. It takes three uh, boards for each paddle. And I use the CA glue, so it'll only take a few seconds for that to, to dry well enough that I can move on to the next one. I finished my work on the paddle wheel. It does rotate. A little bit. I can make it rotate all the way every once in a while one of the uh, edges sticking out touch but it's it's not really supposed to be functional anyway. Something I want to mention is this little pivot point here for this actuator arm that would go back and forth in reality. The directions had to use a dowel rod here and it's a real tiny dowel rod. I couldn't find it. I found it later on the floor but I had some very old copper wire that just happened to be the same diameter. So I used a little piece of copper wire in there that is very, very old. I probably didn't need to use those positioning boards. I could have just used one of these to get it positioned and then just worked at opposite uh, ends, spinning it around just to make sure that it was pretty straight. So it's turned out well. And my wife summed this up. I have moments of excellence, sometimes followed up by moments of stupidity. Remember the straws I put in here to keep the, the wheels aligned properly? I should have taken them out before I got every one of these paddles in place. So now I'm going to have to try and figure out how to fish them out of there, which I think I can do with tweezers in this. There, that one. There's one.
two, and three. They all just dropped out of the floor. So, when you put this together, remember before you get them all in place to reach in and pull those straws out. Finished tying off some of my rope work here on top of the ship. In hindsight, I wish I would have spent more time on this. I could have put a huge steering wheel inside, uh, like a captain's wheel, and just some other things I've seen online that could have gone inside. I should have done some more research. There's some nameplates that will go here shortly. I do like on this brass, you'll notice that the design is put right where there's a support post. So that worked out real well, and it did all match up. And I have a solution for, remember I had this little gap back here that just happens to be where the flagpole is, so it covers it up. That's it for part 12. I'm already underway on part 13. I've made even more progress than what is shown today. This is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.